time and effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm just presenting a personal submission. Um, I'm a resident of the uh, Halsall area, which has um, experienced a lot of growth over the last few years, um, and specifically down near the Halsall Quarry. Um, I'll just put a few slides together because I thought it'd help give a bit of context. Uh, so this was Halsall about 10 years ago down near the Halsall Quarry. It's very much a rural environment. Um, and then as you come to what it is today, there's been a lot of uh, subdivision development. Um, so it's changed quite a lot. Um, and in my submission, I was just, I guess with, there's a lot of great infrastructures gone in um, as part of those developments, um, but there is a few gaps. And one of those specific ones, uh, Kashmir Road, which I use probably most days, or one of my family members will use as a pedestrian or a, uh, sometimes as a cyclist and, and as a uh, driver. Um, you know, it's quite unsafe. It's basically that rural road um, that existed, um, you know, before any of this development happened. Uh, we have to walk along uh, quite a narrow sort of road, um, pretty much on the edge where there's, there's you know, that, that photo that I've got there is quite generous probably. Um, in the submission, I gave some examples of other um, locations there. So I see that you've got a, a new footpath fund um, it's just not clear where that would be assigned and I, I can see that this is a tricky little bit of road um, and I guess the question is to whether sufficient fund um, has been allowed for something like this which is a urban environment connecting people to the Horsell Quarry area. Uh, and then there's a few other sections there up like Sutherlands Road where again people that are in these new subdivisions have to uh, go out onto a basically onto the road carriageway to uh, connect between subdivisions. They're quite small sections, and I just wonder if there's a mechanism there to at least have some sort of temporary path um, as these uh, fill in. Mm -hmm. uh, the other point that I've made is I do use the Quarrymen's Trail a bit, um, just more recently. Uh, got an electric bike, so it makes it a bit easier. and. Um, from the Horsell Quarry area there, uh, it's uh, not so well set up. So when it was developed like five years ago, um, you know, connected into the Horsell Library area and that made sense. You can see that there wasn't really a lot of development to the south. When you come to today, there's a lot of development um, has happened down in that um, area there. But there's this little gap um, along Sparks Road, uh, basically where the cycleway can, um, goes off, you end up having to use that quite narrow um, shoulder on that busy road. So it's a real barrier to use. Um, like I'll, I'll use that, but I have to cross over to the other side of Sparks Road, which is quite tricky in itself to get up there and then cross back over. But like my family members, uh, you know, it's a barrier for them to use that. So again, I, I think you've got a line item um, in your capital program for dealing with the Quarrymen cycleway extensions. It's just not clear where that would go, um, but you know, I definitely support um, those connections and I think you get a lot better use out of that Quarrymen's Trail. Um, you know, I do go up there and there's sometimes not a lot of people using it, but I think it's just hard to get to for the people that, where that's really um, that desire line. Mm -hmm. It also gets you up to the uh, up to the Hillmorton High School, which is this high school for um, Hallswell. And then just a couple of other points, um, just the Horsell Quarry Reserve down there, it's a, it's a great facility um, and I just, I didn't see any particular um, allocation to that, but just, you know, it'd be good to see that it keeps main, it, some funding um, for its operation and uh, potential development given its increasing use. Uh, and I've just highlighted there, I mean, there's a question, so I answered it around the Horsell Swimming Pool, it's an outdoor pool. Uh, when you look at where the pools for the city are, there is this gap down in Hallsville. Uh, and I know it's a big ticket item and I, you know, going forward, hopefully it will be looked at whether that area is sufficiently served. Good. Um, Andre, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, the, the idea of the Matatiki pool was to service the southwest, but it was put in a place that's further to get to for many halls of people than the existing Pioneer. 
Um, just on your point around the Sparks Road footpath, so that section will get filled in. So that's an example of a section that will get filled in as developments progress along Sparks Road. But a lot, of, a lot of the other examples that you've shown will not get filled in until we physically do something ourselves. And the Kashmir Road um, is being put forward at, as its own project. And then the missing footpaths budget would um, need to cater for, or essentially all missing connections citywide. So, right, we'll not necessarily go so far. It's good to hear, thanks. Yeah, but yeah, that's been really useful. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you heard there about the Marateki Hornby Centre being the southwest um, pool. Um, I wonder, would you be in agreement to your local councillor and perhaps myself as well as another southwest councillor working together to try and progress something for the Horswell pool in a way of getting it covered? Um, yeah, look, I mean, I, I guess as you know, I've got a daughter who's just learning to swim and uh, you know, access to a pool is good. Uh, you know, and I guess it's really about is it are the other pools going to be too busy? I mean, it's not so much about access for me, but is is it right size for the amount of growth that's happening in Hallsville? But yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. All right then. <laughs> uh, as part of the new Woolworths development, <laughs> as part of the consent, is um, provisions for a small indoor pool there. Um, it may be a membership system with the gym or something along those lines, but we don't know yet what it might look like, but there could well be one there that would be possible for the purpose you mentioned. But we've got to wait and see for now. Go, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you for giving us a graphic illustration of, of the issues. When I, when I look at the illustrations, I, I wonder if we need to improve our planning so that before the houses get built, we actually put the access infrastructure in for walking cycleways etc do, do you have any thoughts about what you've seen in terms of how proactive we've been in terms of planning to mitigate the impact of the increased uh, development versus being reactive um, oh look I I think there's a there's a lot of good infrastructure has gone in um, and you know five years ago I wouldn't have been able to use some of the footpaths that I can use now um, but it's just getting to some of those footpaths is still a barrier for me and I guess you know, understanding who's going to pay for what. Is there something that's a bit too tricky uh, that maybe the council needs to front foot um, or having a clear plan of what the infrastructure might look like, I guess, um, as those subdivisions come along? Thank you. Thank you. Very clear submission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're getting there. Um, 